sometimes feel anxious, nervous, sad, heartbroken, angry, lost? Do you sometimes react in ways that you regret? Do you sometimes feel like you don't even know what you're feeling? Do you sometimes feel like your feelings don't make sense? Well, today we're talking about journaling and the reason I wanted to make this video is because it has truly helped me so much, especially in the last few years of my life where I've gone through separation, divorce, big life changes in terms of like career change and also my passions have changed. Bruce keeps licking himself. Bruce, can we stop? Can we stop with the licking? Let's let's maybe say hi to Bruce. It's been a minute. Come here. Okay. Bruce wanted to say hi. Do you want to say hi? Hey you. Hello people. Okay, can you be quiet and stop cleaning your mm. private parts while I'm recording? Mm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put you back on the bed. So yeah, I wanted to talk about journaling, how it's really helped me and how I know it can help you. No matter what kind of transition you're going through in your life or if you just want to improve your relationships with others or just do a little bit more self-exploration and discovery. I've been journaling a long time, not consistently, but definitely throughout my entire life, I have had some sort of diary or journal. There's lots of ways to journal, there's no rule, and it's just however it's going to help you during that time. Here are just a few of my journals that I've kept in the last uh, 25 years or so, um, including my very first ever journal that I had that I was given at Christmas in 1994 and have been using on and off, oh, it's pretty old, for all of my life. Should we read an entry? I'll just open a random one here, hold on. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ah! Okay. Monday, January 4th, 1999. Okay. <laughs> Today was horrendous. I tried to wear my hair down, but chickened out and wore it up. <laughs> My makeup was the same as ever, and I still have that clunky cast on my leg. Oh, this is from when I was in grade eight and I broke my leg. Blank, let's just redact names for now. Never noticed me, and blank hates me for no reason. At lunch, I hung out with blank and kind of ditched blank. Blank got all mad and so did I. My period is gonna show up any day now. And my nose looks like a big pig snout. Jesus. Did I mention I gained weight? At least five pounds. Wow. 99 was a rough year. <laughs> okay. So. That was a bit of a downer. However, I've learned over the years that by actually writing down my feelings, the things that I'm struggling with at the time, they might be a lot different from like two decades ago. Um, it does help me process what's going on and eventually it will help me convey what I want to the person that I maybe am having an issue with or my relationship or things like that. So we're gonna go over a few things today about journaling and why you should try it because I do believe it can really help. So the first thing I love about journaling is that it is all about you. There's not honestly a lot of things in life I don't think, especially when you get to your mid 30s, that are all about you. And by that I mean you, most of us are working or we have kids or we're in relationships and you're just trying to stay afloat in many ways in life and there's so many things, you know, balls in the air that you're juggling. But taking that five to 10 minutes or longer a day or even just once a week to just jot down that internal dialogue that you don't even realize sometimes it's running through your head 
and kind of decide, is this something I really feel? Is this something worth acknowledging? Is this something I need to let go of? Things like that. And it just, it feels good to connect with ourselves. Honestly, for a lot of my life, including my teens and early adulthood, I was very detached from my own emotions and my needs and my likes and my dislikes. I followed the crowd a lot. I just tried to blend in. And what that resulted in is me not really knowing much about myself and what I did like. And then that led to me not being able to kind of stand up for things that were important to me, which then leads to me feeling or led to me feeling somewhat resentful and angry and frustrated. And a lot of times I didn't even know where that was rooted from. I just had these emotions and I, I couldn't figure it out. So self exploration in my opinion is so important we are ever evolving as human beings we're changing all the time and just like you need to continue to spend time with friends and family to keep those relationships maintained the same goes for yourself and checking in with yourself and 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 yeah it's important the second reason I've always really felt journaling has helped me as a human navigate this world is that it absolutely helps me process my thoughts and self-awareness is everything if you've ever gone through life and met someone who's completely unaware has no self-awareness that can be a pretty frustrating person to deal with and by self-awareness I mean when personally when I am rude to someone or I react in a way that isn't fair or appropriate and it's because I was triggered by something. Having the self-awareness to acknowledge that that was wrong, to be able to apologize for behaviors, be able to apologize for things that you've said, being able to um, be humble and just admit when you're wrong and that's how you can have better collaborations in your life. That's how you can build stronger, deeper relationships and connections with people. It's being very authentic. And to be your most authentic, true self, you need to be aware of how you are affecting others as you walk through this universe. So there's times when I have gotten in arguments with my significant other and realized that I needed to step away and take some time and space because I'm an emotional person and it definitely there have been times in my life where I've let my emotions get the best of me and react in a very emotional way and then regretted those actions behaviors because it wasn't me coming from my rational logical authentic true self it was me just being angry being sad being defensive being hurt and generally when you act out from those emotions, we tend to regret what we do and say. Because those are very animalistic, instinctual kind of emotions. They're very protective. They're, we're trying to protect ourselves um, and at times at the expense of other people's experience, feelings, etc. So actually that journal entry that I shared with you, I know so many entries from this diary were made when I was grounded, sent to my room, or I was just like coming home from school and just so upset about an experience that happened at school. And without even realizing it, I was taking the space and time, putting down my feelings, and then that gave me also the ability to process them and to understand them. I mean, I definitely was a little more emo back then and had a harder time, but what teenager isn't? Um, but I can definitely look back on this and see how much I've grown, thankfully. So at 36 years old, I still will excuse myself from a room if I'm having an intense discussion or argument or confrontation with someone and go into another room and s pull out my journal and kind of just start writing down my feelings. Because I find a lot of times when I get emotional, I don't even know what I'm saying and doing and I don't understand why I'm so upset sometimes. And then instead of how I used to just try and stand my ground and argue for something that I didn't even really believe in or or I was backed into a corner and felt like I had to defend myself even though I knew I was wrong this gives me an opportunity to step out cool down and also kind of write down what I'm feeling and that 
generally will help me find the root of an issue. And a lot of times it's I was triggered by something that was said, there was a previous experience that didn't go well that was similar, and so I was being defensive or protective of myself because I didn't want to go down that path again, things like that. So it definitely can never hurt if you take that time and space when you're in a heated discussion argument or if you've come home from something that happened at work, etc. And just be like, I need to take a moment to kind of just digest all the thoughts and feelings that are going on right now. So the third part of journaling that I love so much, the you time, the processing of your feelings. And then there's also the ability when you're processing feelings, jotting things down on paper and able to kind of review them and reread them and look back at them. It also allows you to detach from certain things. Because as I was saying before, when you get into arguments, sometimes we hold on to ideas or concepts or just a word or a phrase that someone has said and we, we want to hold on to that and kind of fight, fight, fight for that. But when you take the time to actually process what's been said and then also decide what is worth fighting for, what is the real issue, what do you really want to communicate, what's important to you about that discussion, and then you can drop and let go of all the things that actually aren't going to serve you, they aren't worth arguing over, they're the little things, they're the forgivable things, and you can just let them go. And I think that's also so important. I struggle a lot and have my whole life with things like body image, with um, insecurities, about self-loathing stuff, about just um, not being very confident. And I've found so much with journaling and writing down when those thoughts come into my head and you know the negative self-talk and things like that that I can read it over and be like where is this coming from this isn't coming from me because I at the end of the day am someone who loves love I love people and I want everyone to get to, to be able to go through life for the most part feeling loved and supported for exactly who they are so it makes me turn the lens of that onto myself and be like why am I not giving myself that same grace why am I allowing myself to get sucked into this kind of self-deprecating, self-loathing, like negative self-talk spiral when I don't want to, when I'm always trying to support others and not doing that for themselves. So there's a lot of power in putting things down into paper and then leaving them there or at least recognizing that they're not actually a part of you and they're coming from somewhere else. It's not your voice. It's not your thoughts. It's, you know, subliminal programming from this capitalistic society that we live in that's materialistic and cares about image and all that stuff because that's not me but we are definitely inundated with all of those kinds of messages in our lives and sometimes it gets implanted in there like a little seed and and this just helps you dig out that seed and keep it from growing any stronger i am the most happiest i've been i think a huge part of that is to do with age because with age and experience comes wisdom um, but also I do believe a lot of it is to do with the amount of work I've done with journaling specifically with being more self-aware with being more aware of the internal dialogue that goes on in my brain that I'm always trying to throw a wrench in there now and stop that message from repeating itself so the last part of journaling that I want to talk about that's beneficial is that it keeps you accountable for your own actions and emotions as well. When we write things down, when we explore how we feel about things, we can really discern what is ours and what is not ours. And also, um, and it also gives you an opportunity to be really honest with yourself. When you're journaling or writing in a diary, that's just for you, it's your thoughts. You can say all the worst things you want, all your secrets and it gives you that freedom to have full expression of who you are in that moment and also know that you can always rip that page out and burn it if you need to. So the, the final part of journaling that this all leads to, so there's the self-care, self-exploration, there's the processing of your thoughts and feelings, there's the detaching from ones that don't serve you that you don't really feel are yours, and then the last part is being accountable for what is yours and your behaviors and actions and responses. So 
when I've written things down about how I feel about myself, how I feel about others, how I feel about life, how I feel about my job, how I feel about my, the, the general direction of my life, it keeps me accountable and real about, well, what am I doing to go this way or that way? For example, um, there's times when I'm experiencing a lot of anxiety. I feel like the world is coming down on me. I feel like a complete failure. I feel like there's, I have no passion and no motivation and I don't know what I'm doing or what my purpose is. I generally deal with existential crisis at least like once a month, if not twice. And I immediately know that I need to start journaling, writing some stuff down because with that comes a reflection of being like, okay, so you feel like you're lost and there's no direction, but what are you doing to, to promote a, having a direction or a purpose? It's just kind of calling yourself in and acknowledging what behaviors and actions you're doing that are beneficial or detrimental to your involvement as a person. Most of the time when I'm feeling very sad and, and, and dark about things and I start journaling and writing things down, I will realize, okay, well, I haven't really been working out. I haven't been eating very well. I haven't been sleeping very well. I've, and then usually something will bubble up about something that I haven't dealt with in my life that I need to go and handle, something that I'm avoiding, something that eventually is what's causing me to have that anxiety in the first place. And once I'm able to dig it out, I'm able to decide if, what my next course of action is. Not every time are you going to have these huge revelations and enlightenment. And lots of times journaling can be fun. You can be, um, I love the self-exploration, self-discovery part of journaling. And there's so many prompts that you can find online looking at like what's my favorite animal if i could be um, deserted on an island what three things would i bring what are who are the most important people in my life how what are my what are my top five favorite attributes about myself all these types of lighter topics you can have a gratitude journal where all you do every day is write down one two three ten things you're you have gratitude for that day and all of these things just shift your mind into being much more present in your life, being much more in tune with how you're truly feeling. And at the end of the day, that is how you can walk through life being your most authentic self. And when we are our most authentic selves, we are the most empowered and strong and, and excited about life. And this is what I want for you. So if you have never tried journaling, I highly recommend just looking up different themes and prompts online. There's tons of lists out there. Or just start a gratitude journal. Or just journal by documenting your, your day to day. All of those methods will lead you to more self-awareness and honestly a more positive experience when you are interacting with other people because you'll be able to express yourself as who you truly are. Which is the best. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about journaling, comments, put them below. If you have any journal prompt websites that you use that you really like, put them below. Have some fun with it. Go buy yourself a pretty beautiful, exciting, lovely, cute journal and pen and just get into it. It's a lot of fun and I'm sure it will help you as much as it's helped me. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.